Welcome back. Welcome back. Playoffs are here. Playing is here. Talking about one of the best matchups we're going to see. I'm kind of mad this isn't in the playoffs again, but we got Kings Warriors 9 10 playing. Uh, Tuesday night, the game is. I'm pumped. I'm excited. And we're going to get into just basically things from last season or this season, what we liked, what we didn't like from each team, key matchups to look out for, and then, of course, our game picks. But, yeah, I mean, I'm going to talk mainly just about the playoff series last year because that's the atmosphere this game is going to be played in. These teams are eerily similar. If you look at any number, they're, like, basically the same team in every, like, offensive metric and everything like that. The Warriors are a little bit better in most, but still, I think this game is going to be something to behold. I'm pumped. Um, what are your guys' thoughts so far on just their seasons, roughly, and how this game is going to go? I mean, I feel like the Warriors built their squad up for this reason. I think CP is going to have a big time impact. Um, Steph coming off screens like he's been doing, and I mean, he's been great in the clutch this year. He's been phenomenal. And I think a lot of that has come from mental freedom almost where CP's not going out and getting 30 a night, but he knows he has a competent ball handler who can handle the rock that he can maybe get a few possessions off because he's running 10, whatever, eight miles a game. So I think that move, and we all knew it when it, when it happened that that was going to be huge for them, but that frees up, you know, greatest shooter of all time to go do his thing. And again, we just said this in our Miami Philadelphia playing video. If you guys haven't checked that out, go check it out. But the NBA has done it again, giving us a primo play, uh, play and rematch. That's great. I'm pumped. Um, I'm, I'm fucking pumped for all these games, dude. But but I think this one's going to go down to the wire. That's no a doubt. fact. That's a fact. And like for me, really down to the wire. For me, what it comes down to is is Sabonis, and um, he's he's a different he's a different cat. In moments where it matters, he he shows up. Every every moment where they're playing a big team that is of that caliber i say ad one of those guys that you could say can be a top five player on the planet right now when healthy and when locked in i think sabonis is definitely one of those cats as well and the people of sacramento see that and i think that mike brown has definitely gotten to work with those guys last year was his first full year this year is his second so he really has some time to just like we got done talking about miami philly Spo is one of those guys. Mike Brown is one of those guys just as much as Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr. He's gotten to learn from Steve Kerr. And I think that they learn and make adjustments from where they had their mishap playing against Golden State for uh, seven games. I, I'm going to lean Golden State just because I favor them. But I can see Sacramento, you know, showing up, making the adjustments from losing you know, going all the way to game seven last year in the playoffs against Golden State and really being able to capitalize on their folly for real for them. Moving on to specifically just this game, um, these games between these two teams are always close and a little rivalry has been brewed since last season. My thing is, were the Kings a better team last year? Yeah, they were. So you, every number has dropped in comparison to last season. Um, I liked them a lot more last season. Golden State, were they a better team last season? I would say, yeah. I think there's been a lot of turmoil both seasons with Draymond suspensions this year, Jordan Poole, and that whole thing last year. There's been a lot of weird things happening. But Finn mentioned it earlier, CP3 is going to be the difference in this game to me. I think we know what Steph is going to do. We know what De'Aaron Fox is going to do. We know what Sabonis is going to do. Is CP3 going to get this second unit humming? Is uh, Jackson Davis going to be hooping? Is he going to be attacking and trying to go at Sabonis? Because we've seen guys not really try to go at him as much as they probably should. Um, is Draymond Green going to be able to hit shots? Like, he just had five for five the other that night. That's crazy. Um, to start the game. Like, those kind of things are the small intangibles that we're going to have to look out for in this game. But just specifically in their head-to-head -head matchups this season, the Kings' defense is worse than their season average versus the Warriors, which is – makes sense the Warriors are a good offensive team but they don't turn it over as much so if they can limit turnovers especially for a team like Golden State who doesn't really get out and run enough for how I think they should be playing but if they can limit these turnovers it just allows you to get shots up and I think that was their whole thing last season is they just got shots up 
and by, they defended enough and well enough to be able to get stops. And I honestly do think if De'Aaron Fox didn't get hurt, they might have had a really – I mean, I know he played, but, like, I really think the Kings had a serious chance to win that series last year. And I think another thing that's, like, you can't look at numbers, you can't look at anything else, this is – the game is in Sacramento. This crowd is going to be firing on all cylinders, and I think – that's what makes the difference this time of year. Like, yes, there's the best players, the best coaches and all that, but especially in a one and done scenario, the Kings get the Warriors again. They just lost. That crowd is going to be fucking insane. And I'm excited for it. But um, what's your thoughts, Finn? I'm um, uh, like, obviously, your brain wants to go Sacramento just because they're they're younger and the pace they play with, and they have explosive guys coming off the bench, um, and and they're a much more consistent team. But I think I'd be a fool not to put my money on Golden State. I'm going to take Golden State to win the game. I really, I mean, I know it's the first point I brought up, um, so not much of a suspense factor there. But I, I agree with you, Matt, that CP3 is the X factor on the game. Yeah, especially allowing Steph to have some energy defensively. Cause he's been playing great defense so far this year. He just ripped LeBron a couple of weeks ago or whatever that was. Like he he's gonna have to have a big defensive impact. And in order for him to do that, he can't be initiating every play on the offensive end. Which is so maybe even a guy like Draymond starting sets off for them will be big or running stuff from the high. Um, and like you said about getting the second unit humming, like playing in Sacramento is one of the hardest places to play in the NBA. So you have to control them early and not let them get too many, not let them go on runs, A, but B, not let them make any big exclamation point plays or limit it as much as you can. Yeah, it's true. My other thing is last season in the like in this series specifically, we saw a lot of Steph handling the ball, like and initiating the action. And Steph is most dangerous when he doesn't have the ball, which you can never like he's the only player you could ever say that about, basically. That's actually really, really like all-time great level um so having a guy like cp and having a guy like draymond being able to be multiple and then even if you wanted to you could throw it to steph and he'll go get you a buck it's not like he's bad with the ball in his hands right um that's a huge thing and i guess to counteract my point about the um kings being at home the warriors are better on the road than they are at home this year so like it's kind of a no i don't want to say it's no because i think you always have to give the edge to the home team but the Warriors are one and a half point favorites right now. It opened at one and it's already moved to one and a half. So uh, veteran leadership also translates being great on the road. The ref assignments are put out at 9 a.m. the day before the game. So I'm pretty interested to see who's going to be refing because if old Scotty Boy is in there, if Scotty Boy's in there, there's a zero percent chance that I'm taking the Warriors. If Scotty Boy's in there to put the put the nail in the coffin of CP3's career, I know he's going to hammer it in. So we're going to keep you guys posted on that. I'm going to keep looking. I just looked right now. It says it'll be out 9 a.m. Tuesday or 9 a.m. tomorrow because the game's Tuesday, Tuesday, right? Yeah, Tuesday night. So by 9 a.m. tomorrow, we'll know if the Warriors are going to move on or not. That's true. But let's get into our game picks. You guys basically already said who you're taking. I'm going to take the Kings. I, I, I have not been a fan of this team the whole season. I'm not a fan of them now. I just think that. This Warriors team, their time is up, man. Like, I just don't – maybe they win this game and they lose the next play, and I just don't think that this team is, like, built the right way. And I don't – like, in the case that I just don't trust them as much as I would have liked. And everything that I've seen this season, and even last season for majority of it, I just didn't love it. And I understand the experience and all that. But I think that played more into last season. This Kings team, and they played it to seven game series. And like they know what these teams are basically going to try and do. Um, I know there's some new elements on both sides, but um, I'm rocking with the Kings for this one. I'm rocking with the Kings. Against I don't love all it, my better judgment, against all better judgment, I'm going to rock with the Warriors. And I would absolutely not be surprised if they lose, but I'm going to rock with them. That's a fact. I'll say I'm rocking with the Warriors 100% for certain. I do love the Kings. I'm all for lighting the beam. I believe that they can do it. And in the words of my brother, he said, if you don't want to win a chip, do what? Put Chris Paul on your team. If you don't want to win a chip, you can do two things. One is put Chris Paul on your team, and two is hire Doc Rivers. So those are the two rules right there. 
I think that if you trust so much in Chris Paul and being able to facilitate for your bench offense, you know, in their production, I think you better watch out for Davion Mitchell. I think that that could be the kryptonite in the series. I think uh, Harrison Barnes playing as well as he has. Uh, Trey Lyles, Keegan Murray has gotten better, sophomore. Um, Sacramento is definitely something to worry about. They have the pieces. They have the chemistry. They got the function. They got the coaching. They have the assertiveness. They have the chip on their shoulder due to last season. But I do, like I said, I do not want to discredit uh, Stephen Curry and his experience and his his go-getterness. I've watched him drop 63 in person. It's automatic. And um, I think that the Warriors definitely have a a healthier system around them. I know that they haven't had the best uh, start to the season, and I would say mid-season, you know, due to the instances with Draymond and just politically what's been going on. But I think what they acquired within their rookies, Trace Jackson Davis, Brandon Pajemski, the Warriors show you up. They have you could even say Kaminga actually becoming showing like why he was the top ten pick. And the bonus are going to go nine. at it. Dude. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Kaminga, and I think that shout out to in Kumbuggie. place in place of Chris Paul fucking up, uh, let Moses Moody really get some minutes, really really hold it down on the defensive end, and really help push that ball in transition for the rest of the cast to be able to show up and execute as they do. Last thing before we wrap this video up. And over, Blake. And Blake. Over half a fight between Sabonis and Draymond. The line set at plus 250. You taking you throwing money on it? Or you oh, I'll it? take it over just for at least a scuffle. There will be some kind of altercation. They're not going to Yeah, gonna altercation swing, of some sort. Doesn't have to be oh, punching, or, but some serious pushing or kicking or something. He's going to try and get through a hard screen and put two two forearms in his chest like this and they'll run each other over. Ooh. I just want to say this real quick, though, before we get up out of here. First of all, like I said, these are these are marquee games. These are going to be awesome playing games. Um, it's a little bit of fatigue, but it's also not. I've been down this road before. We were down this road in 2021, 2022, whenever that was. I remember sitting outside of my old house saying the Warriors were done. And it's the same thing I just said in the Heat video. Like, I just, I, against better judgment, same reason I didn't pick the Sixers is the same reason I picked the, I didn't pick the Kings. I think they're both better teams. I think they both should win. I think they'll both lose. Like, I just can't do it. And if they lose, I'll just be wrong. That's fine. But I just I got to believe in these old teams that have proved me wrong time and time again. Time and time yeah, again. No, experience is a real thing. But that's it for this one. Lakers Pelicans video is coming out later today. So like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.